This video will go over 13 different type of INTJs that I notice are commonly represented in modern day media. This is not an all-inclusive list, as I'm sure there are certain types that I miss from this list. The purpose of this video is to show that INTJs don't always have to be the villain to be part of a great story or narrative. Keep in mind that all 13 types in this video aren't mutually exclusive, since one of the type can eventually grow to become another type, and a lot of them still hold the same INTJ characteristics. They're still INTJs at the end of the day. Think of it more like different life stages of an INTJ, but since life experience isn't linear, I don't think it's correct to call it life stages. This video is a continuation of my previous video, How to Write an INTJ Character, and we'll be following the same eight primary characteristics for each INTJ. For those of you who haven't seen that video yet, first, why haven't you watched it yet? I'll link it below for you. Second, INTJ characters tend to have the following eight characteristics. Number one, an NI goal that has an attached FI value. Number two, FI value that an INTJ is not willing to break. Number three, TE actions that are accomplished independently or within a small group of people. Number four, FE is a tool used instead of a natural instinct. Number five, SE is engaged with only when necessary. Number six, solutions will be approached in a unique INTJ way. Number seven, emotions are felt but rarely shown. And lastly, number eight, goals, ethics, and capabilities are continuously questioned by the INTJ. There are a few things to note before we begin this video. The first thing to note is that I'm only providing a brief summary of each character. Each character can be their own videos, but I ain't got time for that. I'm not going to make that video. My explanation of each character will fall within one of the main eight characteristics listed earlier in the video to make it easier to follow. The second thing to note is that no, I won't be going over anime or cartoon characters. That means no Sasuke, Batman, Light Yagami, or anyone else. They're too overpowered. An anime character could walk into a room, know exactly what temperature it is, and defy science, math, and some other bullshit because of plot armor. The only character that's allowed to do that in reality is Dom Toretto from the Fast and Furious franchise, and it's only because he's the only human being that learned how to harness the power of family. <sighs> Dom, you're so cool. The third thing is that these titles don't mean anything. Honestly, they could be titled anything else. They're just fun titles that I decided to give these characters to make this video make sense. And if you can't already tell by now, I'm an INTJ content creator that hates using big words and don't like taking myself too seriously. Because I'm a firm believer that if you can't make something make sense to a five-year-old, then you don't really know what you're talking about. And life is too short not to laugh at yourself. I'm sure there are better titles or descriptions that I'm unaware of that a branch of MBTI school has already decided a name for them, but these titles are my own personal titles because first, I think they're very fitting, and secondly, I think they're funny. The last thing is that it's okay if you disagree with me. These are fictional characters, so they can technically be multiple types, but as with anything to do with associating yourself with a group, we have to accept all the INTJs, the good ones, the bad ones, the one with no hoes, and the ones that we're embarrassed to associate with in real life. Just because we're embarrassed of them, that doesn't mean they're not one of us. And if you feel strongly otherwise and say these characters aren't INTJs, feel free to leave a comment below and let's talk about it. I already think you're wrong, but yeah, let's have a discussion. All right, let's begin. Number one, the INTJ child. The first INTJ I'm gonna go over is the typical INTJ child. Take this representation with a grain of salt because your personality doesn't mature until you become an adult and even some adults don't really grow and mature properly. But because the author is an adult, this character is written with INTJ-like characteristics. And who best to represent the INTJ child than Matilda Wormwood from the 1988 children's novel Matilda? A few of her characteristics are exaggerated, again because she's a fictional character and secondly because she's a child, but she still displays the core characteristics of an INTJ. She has a natural thirst for knowledge and actively seeks it. She lives in a time before the internet, so she has to go to the library and read books. She has a sassy attitude that's usually a result of inefficiencies that can easily be solved. She doesn't get overly emotional in front of people and tend to do so more in solitude. She hates rules that don't make sense and actively ignores them. She prefers to do things independently rather than in a group and doesn't care what strangers think about her. And lastly, she has magical powers. How many INTJs do you know that doesn't have magical powers? Watch this. I just did that. Watch this again. INTJ magic powers, man. Number two, the typical INTJ. The second INTJ is the most typical INTJ. And when I say typical, it means that this INTJ is the one that you'll most likely run into in real life. 
this is who most of us are. The character that best demonstrates this is Kat Stratford from the 1999 film 10 Things I Hate About You. Kat is a very intelligent high school student that's constantly misunderstood and has the INTJ death stare stable to her face. She's unafraid to speak up against authority, and in her case this means high school teachers and parents. She's not afraid of going to places alone, doesn't care what other people think about her, and keeps a small group of friends whom she engages the social and sensory world with. She has a difficult time expressing emotions where she would much rather show it through her actions than actually sit down and talk through her emotions. But what makes her specifically INTJ is her lack of control over introverted feeling and extroverted sensing because as a teenager, that tends to be our weakness. She doesn't care about extroverted feeling things such as going to the school dance, but ends up going because her younger sister wanted to go and her younger sister wasn't allowed to go to the dance unless she went. Kat loses control of extroverted sensing when she started dancing on tables after she drank a little too much booze when someone told her she needed to loosen up. Lastly, she demonstrates low extroverted feeling values by choosing a college outside of the college her father expected her to go to, the college that her father has been planning for her since birth, which honestly I think is the best college in the world because I graduated from it. That's why I'm wearing this. It's the University of Washington in Seattle, Washington. Go Huskies, go dogs. Number three, the arrogant but actually nice INTJ. The third INTJ is the arrogant but actually really nice INTJ. And this INTJ character is written by an INTJ author. The character is Mr. Darcy from the 1813 novel Pride and Prejudice. Mr. Darcy is a social elite that has a natural arrogance to him and he's not afraid to show it. He doesn't aspire to meet new people and is annoyed when his friends drag him to social gatherings because he doesn't care to socialize. He has a tendency to view people he doesn't know as beneath him intellectually and will respond to questions very logically. But what makes him an INTJ is his reactions to things. Mr. Darcy vocally expressed to the main heroine that he doesn't know what to say to new people and that's why he doesn't enjoy meeting new people. When faced with drama, he's willing to stay silent to avoid further conflict when another character actively soils his name because INTJs don't like being part of drama. People that aren't part of his FI thinks he's pompous and arrogant, which he does show externally, but when talking to the people in his social circle or the people that he employs, they love him and only has great things to say about him. He has a younger sister that he adores and she for him as well. He helps the main heroine find her missing sister when she went missing without being asked, without letting her know, and without expecting anything in return. He doesn't know how to communicate his emotions and has to do it through writing. And most importantly, he falls in love with an ENFP. It doesn't get more INTJ than an INTJ falling in love with an ENFP. Number four, the social elite INTJ. The fourth INTJ in this list is the social elite INTJ. Contrary to popular belief, yes, INTJs can be very sociable and adaptable in social situations if we choose to be. That's my entire persona on YouTube. The character that best embodies this is Jay Gatsby from the 1925 novel The Great Gatsby. Gatsby is a New York social elite that throws legendary parties known throughout the city. He has tremendous wealth where the source of his wealth is unknown to the public like any other INTJ, but it's later revealed that it's through illegal activities, so not like every other INTJ. We find out that there's a reason he throws lavish parties, and the reason is because of one thing. He's trying to impress a past lover whom is now currently married to another man. But his FI doesn't care. He then gets reintroduced to his past lover, they have an affair, and a whole lot of BS happens afterwards. What makes Gatsby and INTJ are the following qualities. He's a very private person. People don't know much about him, even though they are very aware of him. Although he sounds extroverted because he throws lavish parties, it's usually on Saturdays, which is a single day out of the week. That allows him the rest of the week to recover his social battery. He creates multiple personas throughout his life to adapt to situations that he's in, whether he's in the military or when he got out. But his personas weren't created for any FE reason, but instead they were created as a means to an end, to follow his NIFI goal. His intent was never really clear until we engage with his FI values. He dedicated his entire life for this goal of rekindling the flame with a past lover. An argument can be made that he's stuck in his SI because he clenched it so tightly to the past. And I agree. But any INTJ can tell you that we have plenty of memories that we're attached to, especially if it has to do with a person. Once a person or a thing is attached to our FI, it's nearly impossible to forget or ignore that person. Number five, the edgelord INTJ. 
The fifth INTJ is on the other side of the social spectrum, the edgelord. This type of INTJ is what most people who are mistyped aspire to be because they believe this INTJ is cool for some fucking reason. And it's displayed by no one better than the INTJ princess herself, Wednesday Adams from the franchise The Adams Family. Every iteration of Wednesday Adams has been very consistent in her personality. She's consistently been an INTJ in every rendition of her. Wednesday Adams does what she wants whenever she wants and doesn't care what people think. She's highly intelligent and usually arrives to logical conclusions faster than other characters that surrounds her. She's usually right with her predictions and typically has a plan and a backup plan if that plan fails and a backup to the backup plan if that plan fails. She banters with people, tears them apart, and consistently breaks rules that she believes are dumb. The toxic side of her is what makes her an INTJ. It's that she is extremely arrogant and refuses to listen to other people when her mind is made up. Her arrogance doesn't stem from her emotions, but instead logical conclusions that she arrived to herself usually lacking SE experience. She rarely displays any form of emotion and is vocal about how much she detests receiving emotional support from her family. Especially when her dad says something nice to her, she, she hates it. She doesn't care about the spotlight or being in charge, but she's willing to bulldoze over anyone that gets in her way. She enjoys testing her theories, regardless of how ridiculous it sounds to other people, but she also has a very strong FI conviction to her family, where in one iteration of her, she puts piranhas in a swimming pool to attack her younger brother's bullies. Because for Wednesday Adams, she's allowed to torture her younger brother, but no one else's. Wednesday Adams is an edgelord, but she's our INTJ edgelord. Number six, the mastermind INTJ. The sixth INTJ in this video is the other type of INTJ that most people that are mistyped aspire to be, the mastermind. Who better to display this INTJ character type than the chess playing queen herself, Beth Harmon from the 2020 show Queen's Gambit. Beth is a character that was abandoned at an all-girls orphanage at a young age, where she meets her best friend and eventually gets introduced to the world of chess. Her life is consumed by the game of chess and she eventually becomes the best chess player in the world. There are a few things that makes Beth an INTJ starting from the fact that she doesn't care to follow social norms. The person that taught her chess was the janitor of the orphanage. And even though he kept telling her to go away, she refused and kept showing up to play. Yet another hard-headed INTJ child. We don't like following rules if we don't think it makes sense. The show also takes place in the mid-1950s and 1960s, the same time frame as the civil rights movement in the U.S. And for those of you who aren't from America, it's a time frame when America marched for equal rights for black Americans and the same time frame as the late great Martin Luther King Jr., Malcolm X, and our very own INTJ president, John F. Kennedy. Sadly, all three of them were assassinated, MLK and Malcolm X, obviously because they were the face of the civil rights movement, and JFK because he signed the 1963 Civil Rights Act that allowed black Americans to vote and end the segregation. JFK makes me very proud to be an INTJ. The reason why the time frame matters is because the best friend that I mentioned earlier is black, and that was never an issue for Beth. Her best friend was just another human being to her, and the color of her skin, through dialogue, they've noticed that she was different, but that never mattered, because what other people think never really mattered to her. In regards to her FI, Beth had a foster mother that she cared deeply for. Beth also had a few romantic love interests throughout the series, but those interactions were always awkward. She wasn't the best at engaging with her love interests, and had a habit of ghosting them without a second thought. INTJs, we need to stop doing that. There's a scene where one of her love interests caught her out for her ghosting habits and she had no idea how to approach it. She just stayed silent because INTJs don't know how to express her emotions. Throughout the show, she's typically displayed as a very quiet, analytical, and stoic person. But there are moments when she goes out of character and does things that are spontaneous, such as losing her virginity to someone she just met at school. Her lack of control over SE is manifested through her addiction to drugs and alcohol, well, what makes her the most INTJ is how she uses introvert intuition, our dominant cognitive function. She doesn't play chess via what is considered the most optimal strategy, but instead plays it by instinct and intuition alone. She plays the game of chess her own unique way, and she dominated in it. Number seven, the self-doubt INTJ. The next INTJ character is what I like to call the self-doubt INTJ. Another misconception about INTJs is that we're always confident in our own abilities, and that can't be further from the truth. We INTJs constantly fluctuate between feeling like the smartest person in the room to the dumbest person on earth. What's unique to a healthy INTJ is that even though we feel like we're not capable, that's not going to stop us from trying. 
And the character that best represents this is Clarice Starling from the 1991 film Silence of the Lamb. The premise of the film is that there's a serial killer that cops are trying to find, and their best lead is to get help from an incarcerated psychopath, Hannibal Lecter, which some people call him an INTJ as well, but dude, he's just a fucking psychopath. The police sent many officers in an attempt to persuade Hannibal for help, which he kept declining. Clarice is a trainee in the police academy that was chosen as another attempt, and she was able to impress him. After a few conversations between Clarice and Hannibal, Clarice was able to get into the mind of the serial killer, figure out his location, and stop his reign of terror. Clarice showed the common INTJ characteristics of being intelligent, quick-witted, and tenacious. She showed courage through the movie by tackling a case as a trainee, impressing a psychopath, and chasing the serial killer alone. What makes her a great example of the self-doubt INTJ is that she was unsure of her own abilities at the beginning of the movie. Although she's very intelligent and capable, she was unsure whether she was able to convince Hannibal to help her. We we'll later find out that her self-doubt is a result of childhood trauma. Even though she was scared, felt incapable, and is physically weaker than the villain, that didn't stop her from saving the day. She found a way to overcome all the obstacles with the INTJ tenacity, and she did it her very own way. Number 8. The Revenge-Focused INTJ The next INTJ character is one of the most popular in present-day media, especially in the realm of anime. It's the INTJ character that's driven by nothing more than getting revenge on someone that attacked their FI value. This is the revenge-focused INTJ character, and the example that I'm going to use in this video will be Billy Butcher from the 2019 Amazon series, The Boys. The Boys take place in a world where there are superheroes, but superheroes have very human characteristics such as addiction to drugs, alcohol, fame, and other human vices. Billy Butcher is just a regular dude and his entire story arc is to find a way to kill the Superman of their universe. I want to know that Homelander has no known physical weakness, so Billy Butcher is essentially trying to kill a god. Butcher is more than aware of how unlikely he's able to follow through with his plan, but that's not going to stop him from trying. Butcher is a normal dude trying to kill Superman. If that ain't INTJ as fuck, I don't know what is. Revenge-focused INTJs are typically blinded by their rage and will stop at almost nothing to achieve their final goal. They won't listen to reason and will usually throw ethics out the window. However, just like any INTJs out there, there are a few FI values that Butcher is unable to ignore, especially when it comes down to people in his social circle. He surrounds himself with a small group of people that he trusts, has a plan, a backup plan, and a backup plan to the backup plan, so he's willing to persevere through the fire to achieve his goal. He's also able to utilize FE as a tool whenever he needs to get the job done. Number 9. The Typical INTJ Villain The next INTJ character is the most popular INTJ in modern day media. It's the typical scheming INTJ that's usually the villain of any show. The character that best comes to mind is the character Peter Baelish, aka Littlefinger, from the 2011 HBO series Game of Thrones. I'm going to be quick with his description because I believe that this is an archetype that most people are already aware of and it's beaten down to death. The show Game of Thrones wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for Littlefinger. This INTJ character single-handedly caused multiple kings to be assassinated and was only a few steps away from being king himself. Littlefinger convinced the wife of the king's right-hand man to murder her own husband, thus starting the entire show, which eventually led to the current king dying from a freak hunting accident, which eventually led to him help poison the following king, which eventually led him to marry Din Murder, the wife that he convinced to kill her own husband to be the next ruler of that land gaming an entire army which eventually led him to gain new alliances since there's chaos throughout the land from everyone trying to figure out who the next king is and eventually he was only a few steps away from overtaking the throne for himself if all that long-term planning manipulation and operating in the background doesn't sound intj to you honestly i'm not sure what will number 10 the misunderstood intj villain the next INTJ represents a villain that isn't really a villain at all. It's just an INTJ that has opposite opinion of what is commonly accepted and thus becomes hated for their belief. The character that best resembles this INTJ character is Alphaba, most popularly known as the Wicked Witch of the West in the Broadway show Wicked. Wicked is the retelling of The Wizard of Oz and I'm talking about the play version of Alphaba instead of the book because that book is trash. It's a waste of time to read. Alphaba is a normal child that's just trying to get through magic school but has green skin since birth which makes her stand out. 
She's a very gifted child in magic, takes her responsibility very important taking care of her younger disabled sister, who eventually becomes the Wicked Witch of the East, and has no clue how to socialize. A lot of it has to do with her green skin and the mistreatment she faced as a child, but she also demonstrated in many occasions that she really just doesn't care what other people think about her people that are outside of her FI social group. What makes her an INTJ is the combination of her NINTE. Alphaba continuously faces hardship throughout her entire life, but doesn't cower in fear. Instead, she faces them head on and always finds her own way to deal with those issues. She doesn't allow other people's mistreatment of her determine her own self-worth. When she decided that she was in love with someone, they ended up together. When she decided that she wanted to help her wheelchair-bound sister walk again, she eventually found a way to make it happen. When she decided that she wanted to work for the Wizard of Oz, it was only a matter of time. Nothing got in the way of Alphaba and she always found a path forward, which she did uniquely her own way. Her FI is in clear display throughout the play as it contrasted the FE value of the other protagonist, her best friend, Galinda, the good witch of the north, the one that Dorothy meets when she arrives to Munchkinland. Alphaba openly voiced against the silencing of sentient animals, even though it was against societal belief, and the finale solidified her INTJ-ness the moment she met the Wizard of Oz. She was given the opportunity to be the right-hand person for the wizard because she was so powerful, but denied it because the wizard was pro-discrimination against talking animals. Her FI value wouldn't allow her to blindly follow. She freed captured animals and thus became labeled as the Wicked Witch of the West. Alphaba is a great example of an INTJ being vilified because we go against societal standards. Even though her action has no malicious harm or intent and all she wants to do is help. Number 11. The Power Corrupted INTJ I couldn't decide which character to use to demonstrate this next INTJ, so I'm just going to talk a little about both INTJ characters simultaneously. And the two characters that best demonstrate this is Michael Corleone from the 1972 movie trilogy, The Godfather, and Walter White from the 2008 TV series, Breaking Bad. Michael is the son of the mob boss of the Italian mafia. His father gets assassinated, he takes revenge, and eventually becomes the new boss. Walter White is a chemistry teacher that's married, has a disabled son, and found out that he has cancer. He decides to start producing and selling drugs and eventually became the most well-known drug dealer around. Both of these characters were reluctant to assume the position of power, but ended up doing so, which eventually led to their own downfall. What makes them INTJ are a few things. The first thing is that neither of these characters wanted the position of power. In the beginning, they were actually against it. Michael wanted to avoid the family business, and Walter just wanted to make enough money to support his family when he passed. But because they're INTJ, they were both just naturally good at leading, and everything that they did happened to just be the correct thing regardless of the circumstances. It wasn't because they didn't think that they wouldn't be good leaders, but they just never cared for the spotlight. It wasn't part of their NIFI goal. Both of these characters did what they felt had to be done to take care of their FI value. Michael saw the corruption that was part of the government, police, and country, and got involved in the family business to protect his family. Walter did what he thought was best in order to support his family when he passed away from cancer. Their reasoning was never for fame, glory, it was just to protect their loved ones, an NI goal with an attached FI value. They both continued to question their ethics along the way, but then succumbed to the very old adage, all power tends to corrupt, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. These two characters are a great example of INTJs that follow their NIFI goals, then becoming addicted to the power as a result. INTJs are not immune to the folly of man. Number 12, the know-it-all INTJ. The next type of INTJ I personally believe is the worst type of INTJ out there. It's a type of INTJ that has their head so far up their ass that they start to believe that their shit don't stink. It's the type of INTJ that believes they are correct all the time and refuse to listen to any reason outside of their own because they think they're more superior. And the best fictional character that represents this type is Dr. Gregory House from the 2004 TV series House. Dr. House is the head of diagnostic medicine at a hospital, which is just a fancy way of saying his team is the team that the hospital goes to whenever they can't figure out what's wrong with a patient. His character is the typical INTJ. Quick, analytical, cunning, but most importantly, extremely condescending. He enjoys picking people apart and attacks their weaknesses, and is able to do that because he can easily recognize patterns from people's behavior, past, present, and whatever they tell them. Because of his antisocial personality, one of the characters in the show actually suspects that he has Asperger's, which he doesn't, which I'm pretty sure half of INTJs have been asked the same question at least once in our life. He just doesn't want to deal with people, primarily stupid people. He constantly feels like he's surrounded by idiots, 
believe that rules are only written for morons, doesn't care for office bureaucracy, and has the same stance as our beloved INTJ queen, Anne Ryan herself, that everyone is inherently selfish, so why hide it? Dr. House is the best and the worst of the INTJ at the exact same time. He's the type of INTJ that never learned the importance of extrovert feeling, being part of society, and how to properly engage with it. He believes that intelligence is the only thing that matters in the end, and that social engagement is a waste of time. The easiest way to describe Dr. House is that he's a teenager that never grew up. The reason why I say that is because he's miserable. He's a dick because his life sucks and he takes it out on other people. Dr. House knows he's intelligent because he's able to become a master of a craft where no one is able to say otherwise. And there are characters in a show he cares about, but he shows it in a very TE heavy way. Lastly, there's a character that he's been in love with, but their relationship ended and he's never gotten over it. Very Gatsby vibe. If you're a younger INTJ watching this video, it's okay to admire Dr. House's intelligence and his capability, but he's a shit human being. Don't be like him, kids. Number 13, the wayward INTJ. I saved my favorite type of INTJ for last and it's what I call the wayward INTJ. This is the INTJ that comes and goes as they please and will disappear at the blink of an eye. This is a type of INTJ that has little attachment and will follow their NI goal to the ends of the earth if needed. The character that best represents the wayward INTJ is Yennefer of Vengerberg from the Witcher series. Yennefer is a sorceress in a world where magic is real. And one of the things about sorcery is that as a lady, you can't have a child because magic causes your ovaries to like atrophy. I don't know if I'm saying that word correctly. I don't know how to pronounce that word. But that truth has never stopped Yennefer from her continued search to remedy that issue. She wants to bear a child. Yennefer is strong yet arrogant and is willing to risk the well-being of others in order for her pursuit of whatever she wants. She spends most of her life searching for freedom and is usually unable to find it. She has little interest in other people and their hobbies and spend most of her time perfecting her own craft of sorcery in order to achieve her NIFI goal. She has an intimidating attitude and a reputation that she uses to her advantage. She continuously devises plans that others are against, but follows through with them regardless of all the protests that she gets. Jennifer is a very beautiful lady that doesn't have an issue finding lovers, but she doesn't trust people easily and it ends up falling in love with the main character in ICJ. Yennefer prizes her freedom over all else and will use her sorcery to maintain it. She also craves respect and adoration, but she'll never say it. Typical INTJ. She has a difficult time coming to grasp that there are people in the world that she loves and cares for, which is a character development arc for her because she grew up very antisocial. Her FI includes two characters that she has proven time and time again that she'll protect at all costs. She continuously questions whether what she's doing is correct, but still follows through with it because she believes that the path that she's following is the best path for her. Yennefer embodies all eight characteristics of this video, and that's why she's my favorite example of the INTJ character. And that's all for this video, folks. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe to this channel to help this channel grow. If you agree with me, then leave a like. If you don't agree with me, then leave a comment and tell me why you don't like it. I don't know what else to say. This video has been pretty long, so get out of here, go skedaddle shoe shoe whatever all right thanks everyone bye